Hello everybody. This is a video meant to address the city of Portland, specifically the Portland Musicians Community Facebook group and 2.0, which was designed to get away from me. <laughs> that literally is, I have been given that definition by the admins of Portland Musicians Community 2.0. We created it to get away from the Andrew Stevens drama. I'm honored because it's still there and they wouldn't let me in. I actually, when I finally came back to society and, and decided to get on Facebook again and do the groups, like they wouldn't let me. In. <laughs> I was like, come on, I'll, you have guidelines. Kick me out when I break one of your guidelines. Just let me in. And they wouldn't do it. So I'm making this video to address Portland, Oregon, the musicians community and all those people out there to one say, Aha, I'm still alive. Two, I really don't care if anyone has blacklisted me or makes it more difficult for me to get attention with social media or, or people at my shows or whatever. Um, I want to call out these people and invite them to do this face-to-face -face shit. It's like, this is me, okay? I'm making this video so that you all can, one, see what kind of guy I am, what I'm about, where I'm from, Portland, Oregon. That's right. I'm street roots, Portland. I, 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 I am a native of dirty Portland Southeast, all right? I lived here my whole life. I ain't gone anywhere. I've not lived in another part of the country. I've not lived in another state. I have always lived in Portland or a Portland metro Politan area. And I want to make this video to let people see who you're typing at and see like, uh, what am I all about? You all knew so much about what I am about based on typing, texting, keyboards, non-confrontational, confrontational speech and all that. I just want to, uh, call out these fakers and non-well-wishing, cursing, hexing, hating, judging, dorking around, adulting, hipstering, whatever, death meddling, whatever the anal retentiveness of Portland looks like. I just want to say, hey, I, you know, I haven't met any of you before. So, um, come meet me, look at me, talk to me. I am challenging and inviting anybody out there to get on KBU radio and get a producer of one of their shows to have a forum where we can all discuss the city of Portland the Moda Center, my band, your band, what happened three years ago in the community where everybody in the world was talking about me and not themselves. I'm, I'm, I'm basically saying like, come, come talk to me. Just do this face to face stuff. Like let's, let's argue in front of an audience and not in a little private sector where you can, be a, be the big people that you are. I'm calling out all the 13 and, uh, to 19 year old, uh, mentality fakers and haters and crappy music listening and performing people that does not make up the majority of Portland, Oregon, but that specific sect of people who have made it their mission to, uh, to, to, to put out my fire, to put me down, to bury me. I'm not buried. In fact, Portland, Oregon, you're going to have to bury me with my ass sticking up straight in the air so you can kiss it forever. That's my, that's my uh, statement to you guys. In this world of texting and typing and putting your thoughts on the air as fast as you can think them before cancel culture kind of catches up with 
what we all say and do online. I figured as a Generation Xer, right at the end of that little generation, um, I think this is probably the best way for any of you, especially in Portland, Oregon, especially for the thousands of you in the local Facebook community groups who either won't let me in or won't acknowledge anything I post anymore, as, as if that bothers me. But uh, a lot of you are younger, and I might not be a grandpa or nothing yet, um, but uh, I am old school, okay? You guys all see the Andrew Stevens with the little green hair from two years ago, three years ago, whatever. There was a big uh, amount of hate and the beginning of what we see is this whole cancel shit kind of happening to me. And I'm not going to pretend to be a victim or anything like that, but I stood up for myself. I don't back down. I don't, I don't. The funny thing is, is that, um, I got vilified. So the story is, is, uh, I'd say about 2017, I had made a post after going to New York city and realizing like, damn, like this would be the perfect place to be a musician. And uh, I just started dreaming and I'm saying like, but I live in Portland, like the, I, I made a post basically saying I work at the Moda Center. I've never seen a Portland band get booked here. And I even talked to the people at the Moda Center where I said, has there ever been a local band that played here as a headliner or, or at all. And the only thing that the guy told me says is uh, we know Everclear's played here. And then that just, as a native Portland, Oregon uh, musician who knows about Everclear, who watched them in high school playing with Hazel and shit, you know, I was playing shows at the same time in my band Virtual Zero in the late 90s when this was all happening. I saw them in the early 90s, but yeah, like, we crossed paths growing up. I don't know art or anything like that. I don't really like his politics. I don't like his stance on drugs. And I don't like him getting credit as that one band from Portland that anybody in the whole country might be able to say, who's a band from Portland? And, and I made this long post. And just, I, I'm a Libra, okay, guys? If any of y'all believe in that shit, like, I see both sides of everything, and I always have to explain myself and clarify and if people start wanting to give me hate and trolling me and stuff like that, then I'll just do it better than they do. I'll do it back to them and watch them keep firing curse words and nothing creative whatsoever at me and just see all the hatred and, and stuff. Okay, so anybody who doesn't know what happened in the Portland musicians community before there was a pandemic and everybody thought it was great to put people down or just have arguments with them for the sake of saying you're not right. A lot of people in Portland know there's there's national success. I mean, shit, Louie Louie was from Portland. They were big rock stars, you know, the Kingsmen. Um, I have a bass player in my band who was a big deal in 1986. Got a Grammy nomination and uh, an unforgettable bass line. He's in New Shoes. National success stories we've had in a, a long time before uh, before we, we saw like bands like Red Fang get lots of attention. But still, I a lot of, a lot, I'm just saying my argument was always like regular people do not know shit about Portland. In fact, more people that I talk to who have been to Portland who are from somewhere else who either live here or left or didn't like every time they came over don't have good memories of this place. And we're making asses out of ourselves on the news throughout pandemic and everything else. Everybody's looking at anarchy in the USA, in Portland, Oregon, we're on fire. There are people, it's homeless everywhere. I wrote a song about it. I ended up having to go through losing a roof and pandemic blues. And I'm not going to go into my whole story about where I've been for two years. We've all been somewhere. But back to the whole issue, every one of them thousands of members in the Portland Facebook musicians community knows my name. Not that I care or that I was what I was trying to do. It started off as I was trying to use it as a platform to get people to come to my damn shows, to get people to listen to my demos, what it was for. And basically, before people really started canceling me, you know, it, it played out for a long time. And anything I would post, whatever, in my defense or any whatever, I, I, I've said a lot of crazy opinionated shit. I have a mental illness, I'm bipolar, it's not an excuse. 
but you know, my old brother came in to the Facebook groups and told y'all, you guys have no idea what, what this guy's going through and that he has a mental illness. He basically exposed my bipolar disorder, which I don't always do in big community groups. But as soon as he said that, there were comments showing up like, oh, that explains everything. He's crazy. Oh, no surprise at all. I have received comments from people saying like, I wouldn't play on the same stage with you if... Uh, he said, I would rather play with Adolf Hitler than play on the same stage as you. I have had people say, oh, you're a dad? You have a daughter? I feel so sorry for her. Okay, we, we all see shit like this and typing and stuff like that. But how many y'all motherfuckers ever met me in person and said something to me? Okay, y'all know, everybody in Portland, Oregon knows I work at the Moda Center. That was kind of my thing. Five dollar waters was my joke. That's like, hey, I serve him with a smile and I get to hear Def Leppard and I'm getting paid for it while you all spent half your paycheck getting beer from me and watching them. Anyway, I was like a big thing in these little circle groups of musicians in Portland from all walks of life and I didn't get a lot of supporters and maybe I came off a certain way or whatever. But the problem with technology the problem with millennials, the problem with communication in this world today is we don't do it like this face to face or me talking or whatever. I talk like this in, in front of everybody, okay? Like shit, I, I'm a street kid from Southeast Portland, man. It's like royalty for scumbags out here, but like I'm, I'm not, I'm not a joker. I'm not a guy who's gonna troll everybody online and not fucking back it up, you know? I've been criticized. I've been told my music isn't good enough to play in an arena that plays a lot of garbage. I mean, shit, I've been working there for a while. A lot of crap gets played in an arena and you're all acting like I don't have what it takes or people don't have what it takes to be that successful. Oh, they're sellouts or whatever. Well, sure, you know, some people, many, many, many people going in and out of arenas and, and living the lifestyle have had to go that route. But I always said... It's not impossible to be really good at something, make something that people want to buy, make them like it. It's not about even getting to the top. It's like, why can't an honest musician get a career, get a local crowd to support his music or whatever, instead of just whatever. I, I'm, I, I think that if we had a forum where people were like talking and discussing without just typing their thoughts and hate and all that shit and judgments. Why do y'all judge people so much on fucking texts? People, I said all kinds of crazy shit throughout my Facebook history that I don't even remember that I don't even agree with anymore. Okay, I'm not the same guy I was. I'm not the same guy I was three years ago when I was fighting a battle on social media trying to defend my music and my belief that you can make it out of Portland, Oregon. It was it, it just became a big argument with people about, "Oh, you're wrong, you know, um Pink Martini is is this world thing." Um the Dandy Warhols was a good actual one I would defend them because they are huge except in America, which is probably one of the greatest strategies you could ever do in the music business or, or acting or whatever. If you're huge in Japan and you could go home in your own town and like ride a bus and not get flagged down half the time, they're smart and they're really good musicians and I don't diss every band in Portland. Everclear actually has some good songs. I just don't like the guy or at least what he has been in the past, he might be totally different now too. This is the whole point, people, is that people are not the same every day. And we all grow and develop. And it's harder for younger people to realize that. A lot of people who are alive and adulting right now don't have memories of life before there were cell phones and computers and internet. People like me, I mean, shit, I'm only 43 years old, but... I didn't have no damn cell phone until my 20s, and they didn't look like smartphones until shit after, you know, mid-2000s or whatever, where everybody started having, look like, we we had landlines, people. We didn't even know who was fucking calling us. It was just like, 
you'd have to answer the phone or let the the answering machine take it. And it's like long distance was an expensive call. Well, they charge you for just, like everything. Like, I don't want to sound like that old grandpa that says, when we grew up, we, we picked up sticks and played stick ball and, and the losers had to eat bark off of a tree. And that's, that's how we won. You know, and like, I feel like that guy who walked uphill both ways in the snow uh, growing up, whatever, but seriously, like, people who are, like, 30s, mid-30s, lower 30s, the mid-30s, lower 30s people, they kind of remember, like, cell phones and the uh, all that shit, but the internet has been, like, a thing since I was a senior in high school, this is, like, 94, 96, or whatever, but, but, but what, the point that I'm getting at is that, um, <clears throat> Technology has stopped the personable stuff, okay? For every thousand negative comments from people sent my way digitally, for all the people who have ever blocked me, and I tell you, out of all the people in Portland, Oregon, I am one of probably the highest percentage of regular-ass dudes who has so many people who have blocked me for being an asshole back to people, being an asshole to me for trying to make a point and then villainizing me, it was, dude, people were not even getting attention on their own posts because more people wanted to be involved in the debate that I started on Portland not being part of anybody else's thoughts outside of Portland, Oregon most of the time. We're not the center of the world. Even if we had 10 legitimate, legendary musical acts that everybody could say was a Portland band... You're looking at a fucking giant in Seattle that's got 20 of those, okay? You know, even Queensryche is a Seattle band. that Most people know they're a Seattle band, and they're bigger than most things that have ever come out of Portland. And you've got all these things above them, the Pearl Jams, the Nirvanas, the Hendrixes, Heart, Sir Mix-a-Lot, Seattle. We're envious of how many, we should be envious of how much they have put out on a national level and and portland oregon i'm sorry to say they cope out with the we're not selling out thing okay they're all sellouts okay there's people that sell their souls in portland oregon for a lifetime supply of voodoo donuts and a center stage at dante's inferno with 100 people in front of them living the good life Okay, Portland is a is a pretty shady place. There's microbreweries and strip clubs and dispensaries everywhere, which is cool and that's what's really great. But there's a lot of lazy ass people here. I'm one of them, um, but I I still I still have an ethic, a work ethic, and and get shit done too. But <clears throat> Portland breeds weirdness because everybody is white. I remember getting a lot of heat on a Reddit post talking about the fact that this place is just fucking white as hell. Okay, that's not my problem. It's an observation. Lived here my whole life. I, according to other people, own my whiteness by just being myself and like speaking. Like I don't, I don't change my language to somebody else when they start talk. When they talk a certain way, I don't match that lingo and vibe. I'm still like eh, I'm a Star Trek nerd. <clears throat> um, they say, keep Portland weird. Okay, the guy who started that was Terry Courier. It's my friend, not personal friend, but like associate through the music arts. He has let us play at Music Millennium two or three times. Um, he invented this whole Portland keep weird with his, short, his legendary record shop that's still open, Music Millennium. And and it is it should be kept weird. We're weird, but like in, a, in all kinds of good and bad ways. They made a whole season of Portlandia about, uh, it's so true. If you, if anybody's been to Portland before, or you want to know what our weird is like that show Portlandia, and I haven't even seen it all, but everything I've seen is like, my God, Fred Armisen must've grown up down the street from me and experienced my life in this Mecca. It was really cool here in the nineties when Seattle was doing the big thing. It was, they were coming down to Portland to watch our shit. There was kind of some stuff that was cool back in the nineties. Um, <clears throat> but I'm here to like set the record straight that none of y'all haters, everybody who said disgusting, despicable things to me. I, I mean, I rarely got despicable with y'all. I was just, you know, I, I'll troll you back. I'm funny. Okay. I'm funny. Uh, I'm creative. I'll insult you better than you did me if that's how you want to play. 
but uh, not one of you said something in my line at the Moda Center when you were at a concert. And I handed you a fucking business card with my band name on it and you act like you didn't care or you wanted to say something or I was so nice to you. <coughs> <coughs> Anyway, it's like, just tell me what you said. It's not like I'm going to punch you when I say tell it to my face. Everybody's so smug. I wouldn't even realize how racist or rude or um, separatist or communist or all the crazy patterns and behaviors that we have here. Like, here is what Portland is in a nutshell. When they say we're weird and there's a personality and kind of a dick, smug, silently, quietly, super white, but artistic and so whatever. Okay, Portland stereotype, this is what it is, okay? Everybody wants to be different at the same time. Everybody wants to be an individual at the same time. Everybody wants to be different and an individual and to be nothing like anybody else who's doing that. And they're all coming out the same. Okay? So it's like the, the South Park vampire crew, whatever. They're like, there's... Portland, Oregon are nonconformists all together at the same time, thus conforming to the nonconformity. If you follow, it, okay? This is the kind of shit that Portland, Oregon is. We're so intellectual. This is how we talk. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay? <laughs> I am a nerd. I'm a geek. I'm a bard. I'm a poet. I'm a Da Vinci artist, whatever. I put art on the walls that I make. I'm, I'm decorative. I'm into tarot cards. I'm into fucking sports. I love working at the arena, man. The Moda Center is badass. But I'm trying to like not go off on too many tangents here. The, this video is to address everybody who has canceled me. It's like, first of all, it's not really working very much. I mean, y'all might not give me a second thought a day. And if this video even makes it onto the Portland Musicians Grand Community site with all the people there, if this video got on there for 10 minutes, long enough for enough people to realize, oh, here goes Andrew Stevens again. Let's, let's shadow post this or let's just, I think, I think even my, my guitar player, he goes in there sometime and it's like nothing he says, it's like, it, it, there'd be nothing going on. And then something controversial or some support of virtual zero thing will show up or he'll say something and then all of a sudden the admins have like flooded it with a bunch of old posts. So it just gets lost in the mix. Just immature shit like that. And by the way, admins, I will address you in this that. But I want people to realize how immature, power hungry, and and how how much you guys love this shit. Yeah, yeah, you don't you know, I'm I'm smart, okay. I just told you I you know, I'm into like tarot cards and stuff. I'm bipolar. I have bipolar disorder. That scares some people because a lot of us think we're gifted at certain things and I won't claim to be any different, but I know about the haters in Portland, Oregon. I know about I don't like to say conspiracies and, and, and packs and tribes and all that shit, but there's a dark little community of 13 year old, um, 13 to 19 year old kind of mentality, uh, in a community of people who think that people, people who think that they have clout and they have power and political this. And I guess what I'm trying to get at is, is like, I've had opportunities to get on people's shows on cable television, local, whatever. And as soon as that thing started going, the gentleman was approached by some people saying, we don't want you to put him on the air. And they'd be like, and he'd be like, yeah, he can't sing. 
he can't sing, so uh, he, and he's he's a dick or whatever. He uh, he he trashes on his own town, whatever. They say whatever they want. It's as if there are people that are motivated to see me fail, and as I don't fail, want to keep feeding that fire, or whatever. It's, I I swear, if this video is watched by enough of you, whether you like my music, whether you hate me. Whether you said all kinds of things to me, whatever, this is me, okay? I'm not that guy, okay? And I can out that guy, any of you, at what you do if you want to be dicks, okay? I know how to be a dick. I'm a little guy, and I'm a dick, but uh, <laughs> we're going to edit that out. I don't care... Like, I, I, I can be a dick back because I'm not afraid to get punched in the face. I'm not afraid of you trying to say something to get my mind going. I'm not afraid to defend myself. I don't care if I've ever been in a hospital, in a mall, in a jail, in a church, in a subway, on a train, anywhere. No matter where I'm at, I stand up for myself if I have to. I call people out because this, this mouth here, this, this, this sort of truth is the best weapon in the world. Even if you don't know how to use it or whatever, like, you know, you can do more damage with words than anything else. The pen might be mightier than the sword, but the truth is spoken with the word, man. I think everybody who might be religious or, or philosophical might want to agree with that. But uh, I was getting a lot of attention in those communities. And I, and I didn't, and I was, I was going through mental health issues. This was even before the pandemic, you know, uh, life wasn't that great even before the pandemic for a lot of us. And I was dealing with bandmates who were dealing with their own mental demons and, and self-destructive thought patterns while I, I had to go through medication changes. I'm not ashamed to admit that um, I seek help when uh, I know that my uh, physical body condition that creates mental instability and has to be controlled through proper medication therapy all the things that i've been doing for the last 20 years because i don't like the bipolar me i don't like the other guy the over you know what what sucks is that life life kind of brings that out of you sometimes i got too defensive when you people just wanted to attack me and like i literally showed up in these groups to talk about my concerts to get people to come to them to share my music, to talk about good music. And the more I tried to promote my band and put flyers all over town and send out hundreds of business cards, which maybe 5% of them actually logged in and listened to a track. You know, most of I'd seen them in the, you know, on the floor of the Moda Center sometimes because nobody gave a shit, you know, but I still pass them out. But it's like, you go through these events, and you host an event, and you invite 250 people, so many of them that you think like, my God, they want to come see my band. They even tell me they like it. Oh, they even got my record. They love my music. Of course they're going to come to my show. And it's like, you're like that, ug that ugly duckling at the birthday party that uh, you had to throw for yourself and like... You know, thank God for the five people that showed up. These are the real people in my life. But, you know, back to these little haters in Portland, Oregon, some of them actually have gone out of their way to stop, to put blocks up on my path to success as an artist and a musician, as a guy who is real, a guy who won't, nor hasn't, nor ever will sell his soul to success. To me, okay, this this is Andrew, the Steven, the guy y'all hate. I'm telling you, to me, the idea of success as a musician, I look at the guy who I'm playing with, Gary Fontaine, as 
a perfect example of somebody who plays music for the love of playing music. He pays the bills. He might not like everything he does to get the bills done, but he works as a musician and he takes care of his shit. And he never asks anybody for help and he gets to do what he loves to do. Okay. So my idea of heaven is touring, playing music, whether it's a motel six or a yacht, I don't give a shit. I want to be a musician for a living. And I've always tried to drive that into people who are arguing with me. The point is like, why are you guys all dissing on the idea of being successful playing music? You're all a bunch of musicians. The Portlandia first episode, the first skit they made. Everybody in Portland's in a damn band. I think it's the 90s still. It's true. Try to get a practice space in Portland, Oregon, and the suburbs. Try to get a rehearsal space, okay? There's not that many of them, but all of them are big and packed in and filled with all kinds of stuff and people and all kinds of conditions. But anyway, it's not easy in Portland to be in a band. But it doesn't mean you shouldn't. But why why, why were so many people trying to make this about, I want to sell out, I want to play at the Moda Center because I want to play in, I want everybody to like me. I want everybody to look at me. I want everybody to listen to my music. Hey, I do want everybody to listen to my music because there's self-help in there, people. My shit, the, put, the stuff that I put out is not smut. It's not hedonism. It's not despicable. It's motivating. It's telling people to wake up. It's telling people to be responsible, take care of yourself, sleep, eat, fucking repeat. Like, I talk about, I sing about all kinds of things. I'm not trying to, I'm trying to self-promote, obviously. That's why I was in those groups. But like, damn, y'all haters, man. Hate, hate, hate. Why is everybody so brave to hate with their fucking fingers? And then when you get a beer in my line at the Moda Center and you're like, oh my God, there he is. What am I going to say to him? And I didn't know who the hell you were. And I served you with a smile. And I gave you money. Uh, we gave you your change back. Told you a joke, handed you a business card. If it was a Def Leppard concert, I had a high probability of people there that might like my music. I'm a hustler, okay? Shit, if people by the hundreds are commenting on my shit three years ago because I won't go away when I'm being pushed by the river of Portland, Oregon. So I went into obscurity. We had a pandemic. A lot of y'all didn't do shit for two years. I don't have an excuse. What's yours? I'm calling Portland, Oregon out because I haven't met one of you haters before, dude. Why can't we just like get together on a public format and talk and look each other in the eyes and uh, be real? Instead of smug little hipster Portland. Oh my God. It's almost like a pride thing that you're so into your own little thing. But, you know, you and your adulting. Like, what? I didn't even know that was a thing until some 32, maybe a college grad. I don't know, a bunch of kids in the Mount Tabor. We're dressed like 25-year-olds because we still like to dress like we're 25 because we feel like it. And we're playing music and just goofing off. And, 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 and some hipsters just were like sitting there talking. And I think we must have asked for directions or something. They said, uh, we don't know. But sorry, we're, we're busy adulting. And I was like, what, what, what do you mean? <laughs> and uh, <laughs> so um, I guess when we got into our car and drove by these highly evolved human beings who are really into um, maturity, I guess. Um, we, we roll down, I roll down the window and I told them, I said, thanks guys, we're going to be busy kidding now. Ha ha. Toodles, golf clap, whatever. Um, yeah. I got a comeback for everybody, man. 
Like, I don't think these people realize. I'm telling you, man, I've had giants breathing down my neck in real life. And I talked them down. Okay? I've had people come at me. Box me in the ears, break the glasses off of my face, and I still won't fight back. And I'd say, like, are you done? And those people walked away, and I talked them down. Or I got away without escalating some shit. Okay? Yes, I have bipolar disorder, people. And it's not something... If you want to keep that to yourself, and you can take care of that shit, and you don't want people to understand why you're so whack sometimes, that's your right. But I, as a person who has a disability, have the right to tell people I have it, to tell people I need help when I need to look for it, to tell people to make art about it, to be myself, to defend people for having things that others call delusions. Okay, delusion is a bad fucking word because it means I don't believe you. I think it's in your head and I think that you're full of shit because those delusions are real for some people. Okay, but I've seen a lot of stuff in 20 years of mental illness. And this city of Portland prides itself on believing it's the Garden of Eden. Every, everything began here in Portland, Oregon. So we have this whole royal reign of darkness, gar, you know, like the homeless Satan. So uh, there's people here that think that, that we're uh, mentioned in Revelations as the city of Pergamos. This is stuff that people used to threaten people over for talking about. I mean, seriously, folks, who gives a shit? If this was the Garden of Eden, it turned into a dump. It was beautiful, like 30 years ago. It was probably beautiful for a very long time until, yeah, whatever. This city is known for Shanghai tunnels. Shanghai meaning... You got drunk with a with a with a hooker or a prostitute, or you were at the comedy club and passed out because you got roofied, and you woke up and you're heading to China. And this isn't controversial. That's actually part of the tour when you go to the Shanghai Tunnel and say, "Yeah, this is that's why we have an underground. We uh, get a lot of sailors and send them to China, and probably a lot of other people and things and whatnot." Okay, Portland is a dark sophisticated, intellectual, filled with lots of wonderful, enlightened people who are overshadowed by the assholes, the anarchists, the, the, the antifas, the, the people who are so into... Oh, just... I don't want to sit here and trash Portland, okay? The whole time. Portland is my home, okay? If anybody has the right to disrespect this place, to talk about it like I'm a heel in a, in a wrestling ring or some shit, announcing everybody Portland sucks, and here's why. Okay, it's a beautiful place. It's a wonderful town, but the population has its own mentality. Like, there's a vortex mentality for every city and an accent and all that shit. Portland is not doing a good job representing itself, okay? Um, and I hate the protests. I love people protesting, but I don't like people who use it for a reason to, um, just to go loot and have, have cause havoc. I guarantee you, of all the people who are out there with, with the BLM stuff out there that were white in Portland who were really passionate about that for the lots of people who went out and did that, they're, they're, they're not doing it because they care about the lives of black skin people. They're, they're using it as a like blackness, darkness. Our lives matter too. It's a valid argument, but I mean, the, the kind of people here are just like that. There's there's dark people here and hardly any black people, which is the whole funny thing about it. And, and you know, they're here. It's a big city. Every nationality is represented in Portland, but I got in trouble on Reddit for going on a diatribe about how the fact is is that we're a racist damn town. We have gentrified all of the black neighborhoods and forced them to go to North Portland. And, and... It's safe here. That's the wonderful thing about whatever it is 
that you know it is a very it's it's okay it's it's not as safe as it was pandemic and mad max has kind of taken over the country portland now has a little bit of detroit michigan in it now and a lot of garbage and filth but the suburbs are still fine the you know most people in portland are fine but uh, and a lot of the people who came out for those protests came out from all over the country to to really make us look bad. They like, oh my God, you know Portland's gonna have a fire party during the election. Let's let's go. <laughs> let's make them look really, really, really communist. Okay, well there's a lot of people like that in Portland, but most of the people in Portland are not communists or socialists, even though they love Bernie Sanders. Try working at the at an arena when that dude or a politician with Secret Service level protection is is working. It takes an hour and a half, two hours to get in the building. It takes an hour and a half to get out of the building. There's two elevators that employees use. I think three elevators they use. But anyway, um, you know, just Portland is a mess. It's beautiful though, man. That's what it is. If this is the Garden of Eden, I mean, shit, it's. Everything grows here, um, literally. I mean, shit, we're our number one cash crops any place else is that's legalized weed. Um, but but Portland is it it doesn't deserve this place doesn't deserve all the attention that it gets. I think if I feel like people are crying out that like we want to be heard, and that's all right. I support that, but like. For all the self-righteous people in Portland, Oregon, I saw a black man lost pretty much the last breath of his life laying down at the bottom of the train station stairs. And the only way to get up and down those stairs with this guy down there literally dying in front of everybody. And people are sitting there thinking like, well, I want to go up the stairs. What do I do? I started seeing people step over the motherfucker and keep walking. I saw people like just standing there looking at it like, well, they almost all, everybody there seemed more concerned about the fact that like, I don't want to touch this guy when I go up the stairs and forget this happened. That was like the vibe going on. And I looked at everybody. I got off the chair. I got off the train stop to have a fucking cigarette and, and, and transfer trains. And I and the first thing when I see a guy on the ground, no matter what color he is, I think to myself, you all have phones. And I'm telling these people. I start immediately telling these people. It's like, what are you doing? You're fucking walking over this dude? Get out your damn phone. And people just looking like confused. It's like... Do I want to give him mouth to mouth? What if I have to give this guy mouth to mouth? I mean, like, finally, I riled up enough people around to say, like, get this guy some help, okay? I looked at them, and, and you know what somebody looks like when there's no life force inside of them, and there's, like, a clump of clay left behind. This dude was was gone, okay? And the more I yelled at these people i'm not trying to sound like i'm a fucking hero either i did what i would do for anybody who 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 needs to live i mean shit if anything if he's passed out and fell down the steps help the guy up something these people were just terrible and by the time, see, I was the one who pulled out my phone, and then some other guy finally walks up and was like, "It's like I was like, see if he can breathe. Like I'm calling nine one one to check, you know." I, I, this is just like this shocked me because the only time I start seeing people acting really like smug, kind of like about other people i don't know i never notice it because i have the white privilege so white people all call me sir and ha 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 i'll joke around with you you're funny blah blah blah, blah. but when i walk around town with my jewish friend and he has this yarmulke on i start seeing people being really crass and rude and confrontational or just, just in general, it's it's like they know the different side of these people that they don't show me. 
but but I, I I I have the right to talk about my city this way. I have the right to complain about the industry of I want y'all people to understand to, to know who I am, okay, and where I come from. I was born and raised in the Felony Flats, okay? Deep Southeast Portland, Division Street, okay? I crossed that busy street to go to Prices Right Cigarettes every day of my 20s, okay? I've never been an instigator, a problem. I've never been a bully. I... I try to be real all the time. I loved growing up and having music like Alice in Chains and, and Nirvana and, and Pearl Jam, the whole Seattle explosion, Soundgarden. But even, even bands I didn't like to listen to like Green Day, they, they created a whole fucking scene that I grew up in. We saw revolution and the millennials of today the artists that they have to look up to and that they were growing up and stuff like that have a whole lot less credibility than the stuff that we went through. And even the stuff before us, you know, the 70s, the 80s, all had just legendary shit that, that created something. I don't know. But I, when I graduated high school, like, it was Deftones and, and, and Korn. Yeah, I'm, not afraid, I'm not ashamed to have a Korn poster, okay? They make good music. New metal is not a bad word. In Portland, it is. But, um... I kind of had a regular upbringing. And I'm just... I've always been an artist and an eclectic. I went to a magnet academy in Beaverton for artists. Those people remember me fondly. Uh, most of them. I don't know. But, like, I went to a school of, like, 350 people in Beaverton in the 90s who were all weird as, weirder than most normal people. It was like a utopia. I mean, shit. It's called C.E. Mason. Any of y'all who watch this, who, you know, there's not many of you. But anyway, just giving props to my high school. It was a magnet academy for weirdos who had to apply for it if they had any artistic skills and talent, and it was a great education. And that's where I'm coming from, folks. Okay? Growing up in Portland, yeah, I did sneak out of the house at night and go see Hazel and Everclear. Uh, and uh, we would go to the Roxy, a 24-hour restaurant and bar, you know, not bar, 24-hour coffee shop in the neighborhood of Ozone Records and, and, and like Rocco's Pizza. These were all the digs growing up when you millennials were thoughts or, or seedlings or, or little, little people. I, I, the Roxy, we could smoke cigarettes growing up in, in all these places. And that was awesome, okay? Life used to be better with Vegas rules, folks. If you don't like smoking, go to a non-smoking section with good ventilation. Go to an establishment where they don't smoke at all. It should be up to the owners. It should not be up to the government if we want to be surrounded by smoke or not. Uh, everybody knows what they're in for with cigarettes. Okay, so Portland... I think that y'all need to see, I'm just, I, I'm an artist. I have every right to be unhappy with the path to success in the entertainment industry. I know you all are frustrated with it too, but I don't think it's fair or fun or right or having anything to do with integrity whatsoever to just trash on somebody because you don't agree with them. Because he doesn't like the scene in the city that you love so much. Or just to argue just for the sake of being right. And if I shove something back at you that you taste your own medicine, there's nothing intellectual going on at that point. You're not... F.U. is not a resolution. It's a statement of ignorance at that point. I'll, I'll at least use some colorful language... To, to diss you creatively, at least. I mean, the shit, like I said, I got canceled because I, I, I responded so much. And I don't care. Like, get it. That's like saying you're blacklisted 
in Sioux Falls, South Dakota. And you'll never get to play in our clubs. And if you want people to go to your shows, we'll actually make sure that they don't go and to look down on people who try to help you. I'm like, well, who gives a shit? This is Los Angeles. This is Nashville. I don't want to be blacklisted in Nashville if I got to play in there. Austin, Texas. Shit. Getting blacklisted in Portland is not really a big deal because the whole scene is kind of designed that way, folks. I hate to break it to your Portland, Oregon musicians community. The city is not meant to breed success for all forms of art, especially music. In fact, the people here who are just really big assholes about everything and just love to keep Oregon to themselves, these people are, would resist having us have a baseball team so that more people won't come here. We hate it when people come here. Get the fuck out. That's the statement of Oregon. It's like, come visit our luxurious forests and beaches and our deserts and our lovely landscapes. Enjoy the place. Ski at the lodge. And then go home. Come visit and leave. That is the state motto. Everybody says it. The other motto is if you don't like the rain and the weather, just wait 15 minutes and you'll get something else. That's that. These are mottos of the Portland community. Uh, oh, that's my train of thought. The bottom line is, I am a native of Portland, Oregon. When I see what I've been seeing on TV, I'm ashamed of this place. I'm ashamed of the behavior and the anarchy, the hatred of law enforcement, which a lot of it is deserved. I, would, I, I told you guys I'm a Libra. I see both sides of the coin. But these people in Portland, Oregon will all protest, will all live up the luxuries of freedom. And trust me, I know what it's like to not have fucking freedom, okay? I know why people suit up and put on a gun and go fight. So that you all in Portland, Oregon, can tear the place apart in the name of freedom and anarchy and chaos and liberalism or whatever it is that you're all stuck on, okay? You'll do that. But then you won't pick up that rifle and that flag and sign away your life so that other people can pursue happiness okay i hate to sound like a damn you know soup I, I i'm just saying like people die people sign up to die so that we can have order and freedom in a comfortable world where yes, even if you don't like your government and even if you don't like the lack of freedom that we really don't have, you can tear a city apart and put up signs and bullhorns and bitch and moan about it, okay? That's your right. But for all the people who just love their freedom, they won't fight. They won't fight for it. They'll blow up a police precinct. And they won't go fight for their country. I didn't go fight for my country because my, my mental illness is a disability. I've had hospitalizations all throughout my life. I've lost years of my life total spending inside of hospitals trying to take care of me. So I could speak like this to you people and have some type of organization and not be the <laughs> conspiracy guy, bipolar guy, whatever. I don't like being that guy. I like being able to work. I like being able to organize a band. I like being able to create artwork. I like being able to sleep every single night and not like it when you miss a night because I want to live a normal life. I don't like weird hours. Well, I do, but you know, like, like I believe in like hygiene and mental health and stuff. Like sleep hygiene is huge and important. I can't fight for my country because of that. 
And even though I want to be a rock star and I want to tour and I want to play music and stuff like that, since they won't take me, I will, I will, I'll go to the USO, man. I'll, I'll go into a war zone and entertain people who are willing to sign their life away, willing to die. So, so, so that, so that a bunch of artists like me could go just play music at all let alone make a living at it, let alone play in front of people. A lot of people in Portland don't know what it's like to play in front of people, and they're still pumping out their bands, and you got to give props and respect to that, even though a lot of them just... We're not known for that many great-sounding, catchy... Uh, the, the, the proof is in the evidence of the record sales. Go to sound scans and look at Portland sound scans and then compare it to, like, everybody else. Okay, we're nothing. Red Fang is huge. They've got like 8 million views on some of their videos and shit. I like them. They're good. Dandy Warhols are really good. Very good, very good successful act. Half a, a third of Everclear's music I, I think is good. And then I can tolerate everything else. It's tolerable. He's a dick. Um, kicks people off his tour for smoking marijuana. Lecturing people for drugs. I'm not a drug junkie, whatever, either. And if I was, I wouldn't be like so... I don't know. I, I don't want to go off on that rant on, on Art Alex Hawkins' shit, but um, I give props to Art, dude. You 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 came out of Portland. You put us on the map. You sang about the West Hills. You, you Dude, Art, you're awesome, but dude, most, just don't be such a dick to everybody and quit telling everybody that because drugs didn't work out for you that nobody should do them. It's probably good advice, but like seriously, this, if you if people knew the stories of like how he is, I don't know. I I don't know the guy, okay, but I I just know that I usually hear negative things about him written and said, and that's like our biggest example of success in Portland, Oregon. Yes, got a lot of bands in Portland. I wish we had a lot of bands that were successful in Portland. I wish that we had an art belt for all the talent in the Northwest from all up and down the West Coast, all the way, especially in the Northwest. A lot of artists, a lot of really good, talented, highly intelligent, highly evolved, enlightened. We have all kinds of just crystal children, indigo, starseed, witches, uh, Buddhists. All, just We have a great community of people here, too. I can't always diss on shit, but... This place doesn't breed success for music. I'm sorry. But I wanted to defy that. I want people to know that the internet can discover people. And all of my hits are organic. I have, think I have peaked over 500,000. Maybe, don't quote me on this, anywhere between 375 and 500,000 plays on one website on IndieSound of all organic plays from people who heard one song and stayed on the page and started checking shit out. Now, that doesn't translate the butts and seats in Portland, Oregon, or really for a lot of artists, but I didn't have to pay for my hits. I've had people with the Jay-Z crowd and the Shania Twain crowd and the DJ 630s of the world telling me, like, uh, I'll get you hits, man. Start rapping. Give us your freestyle. Come up with some stuff. Sing. Be you. I'll get I I get you all kinds of attention. And I wanted to like tell this guy like maybe on camera as he's filming me like, oh you always suck some dick for some crack. No, I'm just kidding. I, I, these people that want to offer me hits and it's like, why why do I need to ask Jay Z and Shania Twain's people? For help. Personally, I think my music sounds better. That's just me. But like, if you guys can write catchy hooks and have all that success, surely I can play at a small market arena in a town that most people don't know where is on a map who haven't been here before or care to know or only know that we have a Trailblazers basketball team and cloudy weather. I don't need help getting attention, people. Like, and I don't care if I have tons of it or not. If I just get to live the life, this is me living my free life, my God patriotic loving American life. 
if I can play music and travel playing music and pay the bills, even just like my bassist, the, the legendary honorable Sir Gary Fontaine, the guy's not unhappy. He's playing music. He's getting paid to do it. He's doing it in a city that doesn't really support much of that unless it's, you know, he's at least doing good in the, in, in the genres that do have a lot of local fandom and, and support, the jazz scene, the rhythm and blues scene, cover scene, whatever. It's not like people don't go to clubs and they don't support music here. He's making a living, but it's just not that many musicians. It doesn't even matter if you're signed to a record label or not. It just, it, the musicians here in Portland, are doing it as a hobby. I'm sorry. It's a hobby. You don't blood, sweat, and tears it as much. You know, a lot of you do. I'm not just classifying everybody, but, like, the proof is in the pudding. None of y'all are selling records. I'm not even selling records, but I, I got a lot of listeners. I think I got about 2.5 thousand views on my music video my time and I've actually made friends with somebody who told me all those thumbs downs and dislikes that you got on that video it was so disproportionate to what it should have been. He said, yeah, I'm sorry, I was behind that. I didn't like you, I didn't understand you, I didn't get you, but then I started looking into it. This guy actually is a good friend of mine now, great musician, great independent artist, has success playing music and he I, and he's doing good and, and I'm just using that as an example I mean I want people to see these videos and see like this is who I am why would you spend more effort trying to 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 diss me or not like me or acknowledge that I can write some good songs okay before I got kicked out I made a challenge to the city of Portland I said I said, okay, I've, I have all these demos and recorded, released tracks that are not demos. People were wanting to, to fight over what the platform was there for, was to promote your music and to get people to come to your shows and stuff. And so after all people making their own posts about me, people making their own posts to support their argument about the scene and about Portland, Oregon, or about how much of a dork Andrew Stevens is, this is for the record. If any of you people watching this can look up the Facebook community groups, there's a Portland Musicians Community Group 2.0. And these people actually created 2.0 so that they could escape me. And my narcissistic approach on and hatred of Portland, Oregon and the music scene, they created a group of thousands of people who left the Portland musicians community because everything they looked at had my name on it. I'm sorry. That wasn't my fault. I mean, I, I, didn't, I didn't shut up. So yeah, that's why it was my fault, right? Because I, I wouldn't let y'all get the last jab on me. I'm better at it. Sorry. But uh, I, I want to challenge everybody who has ever had an opinion on me. Do your research, okay? I'm looking at you right now. Come to me. Come to my shows. Look at me. You know, like, for all the horrible, hateful stupid, insulting, non-adulting statements made by every one of you, including myself. Many of the things I said were pretty immature, but, you know, I brought myself to your level. And, uh... I challenge every one of you go down to KBU Radio public radio, talk to one of the producers, because they won't listen to me. Nobody wants to put me on the air. I am blacklisted in Portland, Oregon, whether that's a real thing or a bad thing or a coffin nail or whatever. It's really not that big of a deal. But I would challenge any of y'all, go to the public radio station, get one of the posts to host a forum. Everybody who's ever wanted to say anything to Andrew Stevens. Come on down and join the panel. Sit across from me. Drink your pitcher of water. 
Put some lemons in it. Be a vegan. Be yourself. Whatever. And talk. And take turns talking back and forth. And not running each other over just because you want to address what I just said and all that kind of shit and stuff. If you can't behave yourself with your fingers on a laptop, you should be able to behave yourself in a public format like a, like a radio show. I'm just throwing it out there. This was a big deal in the musicians community, okay? Portland's just a little pimple on the butt of the United States. But if you're a musician and you have a Facebook connection and you're in Portland, Oregon, you've heard of me before because I stir the pot with the truth. And a bad attitude sometimes. But not one of you have ever said anything to my face. It's a group. You're supposed to talk about local music. You're supposed to talk about your band. I got a lot of people that listen to my music. And that's the other thing, too. I, I was saying, like, I had 31 songs. And I challenged people. I said, if you want to just do something instead of making posts and comments about me and just post something about why you're here and your music, then uh, that would be more productive. I said, I'm going to post a song in August every single day. I'm going to post a song in August every single day because I have 31 completed songs, whether they were demos or released by BMI, because I am a BMI artist with CD Baby and everything else. I'm legit. Published author, published songwriter, all that. I had 31 tracks. And because I had 31 tracks, I reminded myself, I was like, let's put a post every single day. Of a good song. Tell them what it's about. And I made it a challenge. I got people's attention. I, I posted. I said. If any of you. Have 31 songs. And you want to keep up with me. And post something of yours. And don't even acknowledge anything I'm doing. And just keep up with me. If you have 10 songs. Release something. Every three days. And just put it up there. I challenged people. I said focus on doing that. And I'm going to post a different song that's good every single day. You know, good being subjective, of course. But, you know, I, I, I'm i a decent, well, I, I can make some good songs, okay? A lot of people like my songs. A lot of people like a lot of garbage, too. Whatever. But I posted a different song. And somebody actually tried to ban me and kick me out of the group before I could make it to day 31. I think they did, and I had to get back in because I said, you can't just stop me in the middle of this point I am making that we are here to post our music. We are here to promote ourselves. We are here to get people to come to our shows. We're, you're all talking about me, but none of you showing up to my shows. So why don't you, instead of taking all that time and effort to diss me and my band and my project, instead of posting about me or talking to me at all, Put up a song every day. Get people to listen to your shit. Get people to talk about you. Get people to argue with you about your thing. Don't You guys made me successful by doing this. Your guys' hatred, your jealousy, your, your trolldom, everybody all agreeing on how much they hate me. That helped me so much. Thank you. I really didn't think the whole city of Portland would know who I was by the time I was 37 years old in life or whatever, 38. Okay? You guys helped me out. Everybody in Portland, if you've been on the internet for the last three years, remembers that time when Andrew Stevens was the the heel of the musician's community and a, and a nerd and a loser and a bipolar guy who who needs to be... You know, anyway, I'm sorry. I have not had one conversation face-to-face. -face. I haven't had a phone call. I haven't had a live conversation with one of my haters. Okay? I don't know any of you. Sorry. But if you have something important to say about Virtual Zero, if you have something important to say about me, if you think I'm completely wrong, 
and that I'm trying to use the spotlight and that I care so much about fame and platinum records and groupies and, 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 and doing more drugs than the rest of you guys do. First of all, I'm not that guy. <laughs> so many people I find jealous and envious of the fact that like I know how to get somewhere playing good music. Sure, you know, like I haven't, I mean, I got, I got a lot of hits on, on my shit. Like I'm not bragging, but like I have a fan base. Virtual Zero is an underground thing. I'm a veteran of the Burning Man Festival. We're called Burners. We're really cool people. Not all of us, but many of us. And we believe in unity and people's rights and stuff like that every person and uh anyway i'm I, I go back to being a street kid guys i'm a street kid from southeast felony flats i got respect i don't i don't break laws i don't break rules i'm real i'm honest i'm sincere i'm full of shit a lot of the time too i get esoteric sometimes people can't even understand what i'm talking about sometimes uh, people will think i'm actually talking about you know, Star Wars is real shit, whatever. Um, I just want people to see, like, this is me. This is who I am. I don't think any of you really knew this guy when you were typing at me and I was typing at you and we all wanted to argue about Portland, Oregon. Dude, nobody cares about Portland, Oregon. Nobody thinks about Portland, Oregon. Even with a huge show like Portlandia, and all the millions and millions of people who have ever been through here or lived here before were not important, okay? Every city thinks they're the center of the universe. Every city in the world thinks that they're the real Garden of Eden, okay? Every city thinks that everybody thinks about their city, okay? I can tell you right now, I can name 15 acts in that are from Michigan or Detroit or New York City or Seattle. I've already done that. Like, all these cities and stuff like that. And, and you know what? A lot more people in the world do think about those cities and those places. But you know what? Most people only care about where they're at and what's going on in their bubble. So... I just felt like I was arguing with a bunch of people that just couldn't see the bigger picture or their perspective or th th so much stubbornness and jealousy and, and hatred out of people that, that, should, that should really, instead of trying to fight for the sake of fighting, to try and have the right opinion, to try and have the right thing to say to me or to anybody else, you care too much. I, I'm guilty of that. I cared too much about what y'all thought about me and that I needed to defend every ignorant statement that I've ever had thrown at me. That was growing up with, with uh, the, the world. And, and now, now everything gets kicked out of Facebook groups. I mean, shit, you, you fart the wrong way and they'll lock your Instagram account. But, uh, I'm not world famous folks. But in Portland, Oregon, if you're a musician, you know who I am. You've probably heard one of my songs before. You might have looked at a video. You might have said something to me yourself with a keyboard. But uh, I come from Generation X, man. And the people before us, we, we're more like, we like to be reality people. We like to be, I'm going to pick up the phone and call your ass and not send you a text that you can't decipher the tone of and it actually can't translate it properly. You know, people 10 years younger or even younger have become impersonable where, where they will, you know, I, I sound like I sound like that old dude again. Get off my lawn, you hippies, you hipsters, you fucking losers, you country music listeners, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> But seriously, like, my generation did some fucked up shit, too. But uh, we got our wisdom now. We got our knowledge now. And a lot of us have become completely different people than we were even three years ago. 
and we have all grown up getting used to technology and the worldwide connections and all that stuff. I remember when the internet started coming around, it was it was exciting to have a long distance relationship. You know, I dated a girl in Buffalo, New York, when Lit Biscuit had a chat room, and that was like, I want to talk to people who like what I like. And then, yeah, you know, it, it, there's so many growing pains, and then the catfishing. Everybody's had catfishes and and uh, inheritances from African uh, royalty that are leaving you. Is that's yeah, we've all gone through all that shit. I feel bad for people who still go through all that, too. Um, evil people on the internet. That's what I'm saying. This whole video is about, like, Jesus. Why does everybody choose to be so brave when they're writing stuff and they don't have anybody, any, any consequences? I'll tell you all. I, ha I will. I would take the consequences of showing up in a public place and getting on a microphone with a bunch of you haters. I'd love some admins to come to a, a live forum and talk about some of the stuff that they've done and defend their position and then cross-examine me or whatever. Like, Not that I even want to spend that much of my time addressing everything, but shit, dude, I'll, I'll come down and do a radio show. You can call me. You can you can bitch at me, curse me out. You can have a dialogue. We can talk about like, hey, maybe y'all misunderstood me because I'm not talking to you like this. This is a video. This is me. This is the guy you guys all picked a fight with. Okay? When people pick a fight with me and they punch me in the face, I say, are you done? You hit like a girl. I'm sorry. That's, that's me. I got a Scorpio in my chart, okay? <laughs> I got a lot of Taurus in my chart for all those who that makes sense to. Actually, a large Wiccan and eclectic uh, witchcraft community here in Portland, Oregon, most of which are benevolent. We love you people. I love talking astrology. I love, I say, I got tarot cards, and you know, that's like being bipolar kind of puts you in that world, I guess you could say. Uh, people who are schizophrenic, people who hear voices. I take a lot of these people very seriously because. Um, it's, it's, it's hard to diagnose a delusion, no matter who you are, because a lot of people will go to, um, a building once a week and they all agree with each other and, uh, read, read their translations the same way and, you know, blah, 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 blah. not me. I do my own thing. I have a, I have understanding of, of, uh. The universe, I guess, uh, uh, spirit. I'm making this video so you can see what it's like in my presence. So many of you, if you were in my presence, couldn't get past my kindness or just didn't want to say what you said on your laptops or whatever. Say it to me. I don't, I'm not, I can take it. I've been dissed before. I've I've had people out tongue twist me and make me look like an idiot. But shit, I'm not a guy who backs down either. If a bully, if a giant wants to pick on me, before he does that, I will announce to everybody looking around and say, look at that giant who's such a pussy that he has to pick on somebody that he doesn't even have a hard time knocking over with his breath. Who's the pussy? The little guy or the guy who thinks that he needs to show that he's strong. <laughs> I mean, come on. These are these are conversations you have in hospitals and, and incarcerations and things like that throughout history with mental illness. I have a pretty good perspective on what is what people are treated like who have it worse. People who have it and can't control it, people who don't take care of themselves. Um I guess I just want to close this up and just say Portland, I'm I'm I'm, I'm calling you out, okay? Not like I want to pick a fight, but I'm not going anywhere, okay? Like, you guys are going to have to hate me because I'm going to make some music and I'm going to get it to a lot of people and I'm going to do it because it sounds good. I'm going to do it because it feels really good to perform it and to give it to people who want to receive that energy. I'm telling you guys, like, seriously... 
just 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 show up talk y'all had no idea that this was who I was or what I was about I'm trying to make a video here a long video here for anybody who wants to know anything about me this is me I'm gonna start doing podcasts I'm gonna start playing real shows I'm gonna have a whole band full of people who I trust and love who are gonna put together something that has just not been seen before in the same way that we're doing we want to I'm not trying to be the next big thing. I'm trying to be the next new experience for people who love hard rock music, okay? It's rock and roll has been dominated by men forever. And even though maybe rightfully so, it does not mean that uh, I, I just want people to know that Virtual Zero is, is going to expand in the future. And uh, I, di I did a track on my album with a female and I liked the dynamic of that with rock and roll so much that I, I, I'm, I'm working on a project that will have women in it. Hopefully. I guess I shouldn't give away too much, but yeah. If anybody at all wants to argue with me, dude, just argue with me in front of me, okay? Go pick up a phone and argue with me. Don't put your words out there without any consequences. Dude, if you talk, if half, if half of you people said the shit that you said to me to my face, I don't care how big you are. I don't care what you'll do to me. I will bitch slap anyone who talks to me with a fucking mouth like that. And that's why you won't do it to me to my face, okay? Sorry. I don't I don't back down. You know, everybody has a certain amount of fear in their lives that'll make them back down. And certainly I know when when I've done too much that it's time to chill. But you can't push this angel, man. You can't push this angel. You push me and I'll still be nice. I'll still be kind, I'll still be sincere, I'll still be me. And every free minute I have to work on me and, and this art project that is my life, I'm dedicating it to my happiness. And none of you can bring me down. You did for a while. I let it affect me. I grew. And we all should have grown in the last two years in the pandemic. So, yeah. If anybody has a problem with me, please have a problem with me outside of being in front of your little screen. Come to my show. Have a problem with me. Argue with me. Tell me how much I suck. Tell me how much you feel bad for me for putting a child in this world that had to have me for her dad. Tell me that. Don't type it and then run away with the whoop, 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 F you too. I'm better than you. I have the superior opinion. I have the wittiest comeback. I have the internet research knowledge to prove you wrong. There ain't nothing worse than somebody who says, hey, that's not right. I found a website. So that's not right. That's like saying I went to the library and I pulled out a book. And I said, that's not right. You're wrong. Some stranger could listen to my band and go on to Portland Musicians Group and say, hey, I really like this band. I listen to them. They're called Virtual Zero. They sound like the 90s. They're pretty good. And and it's, it's a blacklist thing. It's like it didn't happen. If there was one person, if not a group of people, who put any amount of effort into... trying to see me fail at something and making it that way or, or, or just trying to put up obstacles in front of me. These are people that need to worry more about themselves. The truth is the truth, but, you know, I don't know. I just want to say this is uh, Reverend Andrew Zero from the band Virtual Zero, a.k.a. Andrew Stevens. Mr. Andrew Philip Stevens, exile of the Portland musicians community, not just Facebook group, but music scene in general. 
doesn't really bother us. <laughs> I'm just going to keep making music. I'm going to keep sticking up for myself. And yeah, like I'll, I'll back down when someone's beating the crap out of me or just wants to be ruthless and evil or, or, or just, you know, I don't, I usually will avoid the fight before actually telling somebody you hit like a girl and getting to that point. But, um, I want you guys to just look at, this is me. If y'all hate me, at least, at least now, if you sat through me talking for a while, you might understand, like, I'm all right. Come on. I'm easy to be around. I'm nice to everybody. Until I reach, until it's, I'm nice to everybody until I meet a narcissist. And then I, I, and then I do it better than they do back at them and they don't like it. That's pretty much the moral of this story. The Portland Musicians Community Group couldn't take being retaliated against with truth or at least with better wit and trolldom than they were giving me as a result. They kicked me out. I can't go back into any of these groups and get any kind of attention on anything at all. They want people to think that I've been forgotten about. This is, uh... Reverend Andrew Zero from the band Virtual Zero. You're going to have to bury me with my ass sticking up straight in the air so you can kiss it forever. That's my, that's my uh, statement to you guys.